Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Adaki Parker. I'm the owner of Dovetailed and today I'm filming um, in Hochanda Studios in Peterborough. I'm going to be on the show today, it's the 17th of March to, uh, 2020, and I'm going to be filming um, with them at four o'clock this afternoon. I'm going to be selling African wax print fabrics. I'm going to be selling the sewing patterns that I design, and I'm really looking forward to it. So some of you may know that I own a company called Dovetailed. I sell African wax print fabrics. I design sewing patterns, and I also sell sewing supplies. Um, in addition, I run workshops from my studio in East London. And as if that wasn't enough, I've also got a book coming out um, in the summer um, called Sewing with African Wax Print Fabric. I'm very fortunate to be working with uh, publishers on this book. Um, it's been a lot of work and um, we are looking forward to putting that into print and having that um, ready for the summer. It is already available to um, um, pre-order on Amazon and thank you to everyone who has already pre-ordered on Amazon. So what I'm going to do today um, is to quickly show you how to attach bias binding. So um, what I've got here is um, a size 12 in the um, Priscilla sewing pattern which I have cut in sparkles and stripes. I don't know how well you can see that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some black bias binding. I'm deliberately using um, a contrasting, well I say contrasting, it, w it was meant to be contrasting, but of course this bit's black anyhow. Anyhow, there we are, never mind. You should still be able to see it. What I find sometimes when demoing is that if I use the um, exact fabric that the, fa that the garment is made up in, it doesn't always um, show up that well when you're trying to demonstrate to someone how to do it. So this is um, shop-bought bias binding, if you haven't seen it before. What it is, is um, fabric that's cut on the bias. When we say that fabric is cut on the bias, we mean that it's cut at 45 degrees to the selvage. Um, fabric at that angle has its most stretch. So what you can see, for example, on what I'm wearing, I'm wearing the Megan tunic, and I've made this up in um, teardrops on red. You can see that I've got bias binding here on both sleeves, contrasting, and I've also got bias binding on the neckline. The stretch in bias binding means that when you're sewing on the curve, which you will have on either a neckline or um, a sleeve, is that it allows the fabric to easily um, sit on that curved area. It's much harder to do that if you're using fabric that's cut in either the straight grain or the cross grain because it doesn't have that stretch. So what I'm going to do is um, start attaching and I hope you can see this. So I'm going to start with a sleeve. The fabric is facing right side up. I will um, open up this bias binding I hope you can see that. They're essentially, um, it's folded into four because you've got this part that's flat, these two parts folded over, and then essentially when you have finished, it will look something like this. So open it up, turn it under here by about a centimeter or so because that will mean that when you have finished um, sewing this area, the raw edge here is hidden. So I'll turn that over and I'll line it up, I think immediately with the seam on the sleeve. So this top seam here, I'm lining it up there and then I'll get my pins. and I will pin, and you can see that I'm lining up the raw edge, a raw edge of the bias binding with the raw edge of the sleeve. Okay. 
Uh, those of you who are unfamiliar with these fabrics, they are referred to as African wax print fabrics. They're also known as Ankara fabrics. Um, they are wax printed. Um, by wax printing, we mean that the wax resist method of printing onto cotton has been used to create these beautiful designs. We don't mean that it actually has wax on it. Essentially, it's 100% cotton. I would um, treat it as you would any medium weight cotton. This means that you would um, pre-wash your fabric before uh, cutting into it and sewing. This just helps to soften the fabric a little bit and also just sort of gets rid of that factory finish. The colours don't fade. I have to say that in preparation for this show, I washed quite a few different fabrics together in my machine and there was no fade, no run, nothing of that sort. They're all colour fast and are um, really lovely to work with. So you can see I've gone all the way around with my pins. As I say, the right side of the binding is matching the right side of the sleeve and you've lined up the raw edges. And then, and I'll try and do this slowly, when you have got, when you've met up, as it were, with the part that you initially started um, pinning, just come a bit further along with the binding to make sure that you've, it's covered and then cut. Just make sure that the part that's come round extends beyond the area where you started. Okay, and now we can start sewing. So what I like to do is I like to use a, if your machine has one of these, you can remove it um, just so you can get, um, you can use a very, this small little arm here. It's great for sewing something like a sleeve because it means that you're not um, fighting to kind of get that small circumference over a larger space. Take your threads um, out to the side and line up the needle so that it points in, drop the needle down, the sewing needle down, the machine needle I should say, down into that groove which is the first groove closest to the raw edge of your binding and your sleeve and start sewing. Making sure that your needle follows that fold line. Bias binding is obviously something that you can make yourself. It doesn't have to be bought from the shop. If you have scrap fabric, you can make a contrasting bias binding in that fabric, or um, you can make the bias binding up in the fabric that you're making up your garment in. What I like about the shop-bought one is it just really adds, I think, a lovely um, sort of pop, pop of colour to these fabrics. So I started the business in um, 2017-18. Having 
taken a number of um, evening classes in textiles. Shortly after, I began making bags and clothes. And I'd get quite a few compliments. People might want me to make something for them. And that was really how the business started. So what you will do when you get to the end, I'll just take it out so you can see. What you'll do when you get to the end is make sure that you line up the fold as you come around the circumference, back stitch, and you finish that. The next thing to do is to trim down this seam, because what that means is that when you eventually come, the next step after that will be to fold this over like this. And then top stitch from the top here encasing that raw edge and catching this other side, therefore making your bias binding and finishing off, finishing it off with, an, with a, night, a nice neat finish. But before you do that, what I quite like to do is to trim down this seam because it just means that there's less bulk as you come to hide this um, seam if you like, and as you then come to finish off your bias binding. Some of you may know that I regularly exhibit at many of the uh, big shows around the country. So most recently, I was at the Knitting and Stitching Show. Well, they don't call it that anymore. It's now the Stitch Festival. Um, I was there at the Business Design Centre last month, so February, February into March. Um, that was lots of fun. Um, my next shows, <laughs> all being well, given what's going on at the moment. Um, I have one in Essex. I have another one in Surrey. And then I'll be at the Festival of Quilts, the big one in um, Birmingham, in August. In fact, 31st of July, I think that starts. So, and all being well, the book will be available then as well. Fingers crossed. So what I'm doing now, trying to keep it nice and neat, is just folding over. And I normally start from here, because if I can get this bit right, where you have the most bulk, the rest of it pretty much falls into place. Now, you're normally supposed to um, use your pins at right angles to what you're sewing, but just because of the bulk here, I like to use these pins going across just at that section and then as I continue I will be using the pins at right angles. I just wanted to say um, a word about sewing with these fabrics. Um, the general rule with dressmaking is that your fabric is cut on the straight grain but I find um, with these fabrics that it's, it's often better to actually follow the design. Um, so if, for example, the particular way that the fabric is cut, or rather the particular way that the print points, means that you would prefer to cut on the cross grain, then do go ahead and cr cut on the cross grain. You know, follow the design rather than the straight grain or the cross grain. So what I'm um, doing is making sure that that original seam line is hidden and that by sewing from the top here, I will um, catch this fold here. So 
So there are um, three sewing patterns that I currently sell. The one that I'm working on at the moment is the Priscilla. It's a really easy sew. It, um, it doesn't have any uh, fastenings, buttons or zips. Um, so it literally sort of, um, you put it on over your head without having to worry about buttons or fastenings. Um, and it's finished with bias binding. It's two pieces, one for the front, one for the back. Um, the sort of thing that, you know, you could sew up um, in a day or less. So if you had something that you were going to on that day, you could sit down um, to sew and finish it in one day, if not less. So now that I've pinned everything together, I wouldn't normally give it a press, but you can do. You can give it a press if you think it needs it. So back to the machine. And um, I'm going to line up my needle with the edge of the binding where the original stitch line is. I hope that makes sense. But essentially, I'm trying to catch that fold line that has covered the original stitch line that I just made. My um, other sewing patterns include the Megan, which is what I'm wearing. It's a tunic dress. Um, it has patch pockets on the front. And again, it's finished with um, bias binding. Again, another really easy sew. But more than that, um, what I love about these patterns <laughs> is that they really allow you to make the most of the fabric. You know, I really think that the, um, the fabrics, or rather the patterns or prints of these fabrics should really sing. Um, there are a lot of sewing patterns that just have so many pieces that they really cut into these fabrics and, you know, cut the design away. When I, thought about designing sewing patterns, it was really important to me that I designed them with the fabrics in mind so that they would make the most of these um, beautiful fabrics. And my um, third pattern is a, a skirt. It's an elasticated um, waistband skirt, a skirt with an elasticated waistband, um, inseam pockets, really large inseam pockets because everything has to have pockets, doesn't it? It doesn't, you can't have a skirt without pockets. Um, another really easy sew that also does wonders for these fabrics. So I'm not sure what the best way is of holding this up, but look at that. Doesn't that look so lovely? So professional, I suppose it's quite nice that I've only done one, so you can compare it to the other one. So that would be your um, finished sleeve. And really, as simple as that, you can turn it this way, it looks really neat, really uh, professional in terms of its finish. And that is how you install bias binding. You would repeat that for the sleeve and for the other sleeve and for the hem on this top and then as well as the neckline. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, do um, subscribe to this channel and um, like this video and also leave any comments below and visit um, hachanda.com for more information. Thank you so much. Bye.